St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna is considered to be one of the most important Catholic cathedrals in Europe. No wonder that in this 16th century map of the city, which is kept in the main historic museum in Vienna today, the cathedral is depicted as the very center of the city. But if we pay close attention to the image, we will see that on the top of this Christian cathedral stands very well visible so-called Islamic symbol. According to this Kariger version of history, um, the Ottomans sieged the Vienna a few times but never managed to really conquer it. And now let's look at the next medieval gravure where this actual siege is depicted and we can see the Ottomans coming towards the city. And surprise, surprise, on the uh, flags of the attacking so-called Muslims we see Christian cross and not one but a few of them along with the Muslim crescent symbol. Nowadays, this artifact is kept in a history museum in Vienna. All other artifacts have proper description and very detailed information is available for about almost anything else, including uh, full history of the tiling of the floors. The very emblem, old emblem of the city was placed in a dark corner without any description. What is going on actually here? It looked very awkward. On one side, the history books tell people that uh, Vienna was never um, taken by any Ottomans and yet uh, for a long time their most important uh, Christian cathedral had the Muslim site on the top of it. 10-15 years ago when the project of the new uh, chronology started getting popular, people heard about this and when they were visiting uh, this uh, museum in Vienna, they started asking uh, what is this, how come this uh, the symbol of the enemy on your on the top of your most important cathedral. So they had to put some sort of a sign because the situation was getting very uncomfortable and this is what they came up with. Actually the Pope and the Kaiser, these are the moon and the stars and that's what it is on the symbol. This is a photo of this new plate in this museum. And the lie is so obvious, just look at the symbol itself, it's written Suleiman on it. In the empire of the survivors, uh, the crescent and the cross were coexisting peacefully as did the two religions, or to be more precise, the two branches of the one religion. And after the new paradigm was forced upon the people with the power of the sword, they removed this symbol from their cathedral uh, with hatred because they started believing that this is purely Islamic uh, symbol and also they were led to believe mistakenly that the Muslims are their enemies. Altering the dates of the history was not enough for those who ordered the new history. They also embarked on the task of presenting the local governors and rulers of the various provinces of the Empire of the Survivors uh, as independent rulers to cover up the traces of the survivors. Second, they created tons of fictionally phantom events and persons to fill up the artificially manufactured gap of the 1000 years shift back in history and also the other shifts that was a lot of vacant space and time in history that needed to be filled up with something artificial. Not difficult to achieve because in various areas the people had different names for the same person. For example, Charles is in French, but the same person in England will be called Charles. And yet if we go to Spain, the same person would be Carlos. In this way, the same person would be reflected in the history of various nations under a different name and the events that he is involved with will be similar, however not exactly the same. Many such phantom events or doubles of the same have been discovered and studied 
by the scientists who are writing the so-called new chronology, that is the project in which Anatoly Fomenko plays pivotal role. Many contemporary scientists take part in this project and you can find the names of most of them in the list that I provided earlier. At least half of the information in, in this video series is based on the research of this group of scientists. The next task of the fabricators of the history was to ascribe the knowledge and culture that the survivors brought to various uncivilized nations and tribes as local. Um, they always uh, try to assure us that the tribes naturally evolved and learned, discovered how to do things just like that by themselves. The next task of the fabricators was to misrepresent the various groups of survivors and always provide some sort of explanation that these were actually local people or they came from somewhere else but that they were not actually what they were and things like that. Before reviewing in detail the war on the last few islands of descendants of survivors, I would like to say a few words about the true history of religion. Changing it's the original difficult. pure spiritual knowledge of the survivors was vital for the parasites. On one side, they absolutely had to deprive the humans of their true spiritual path so that they can render them powerless as they forget their true nature of magical interdimensional beings. And the parasites managed to put most of us in very tiny boxes of existence and convince us that this is all that is. There is nothing outside of this small box and you live inside it. On the other side, the new parasitic colored versions of religions became very, very convenient in starting wars. And wars are favorites for the parasites. Not only the humans kill each other without any external help, but also it gives pleasure to the parasites because that is exactly their very nature. It is one of suffering and misery and pain. As far as Christianity is concerned, there is almost no point discussing it. So much has been written and so many people have expressed their legitimate concerns that in its most popular form nowadays it has very little to do with the mission of Christ or his person. More information can be found, for example, in my video about Lord Bao. Research on the topic that actually the Bible is a very recent uh, creation is readily available all over the internet. Very few people are aware, however, that there is plenty of evidence and historic artifacts pointing towards the fact that Christianity, Islam and in fact all world religions have a common source. Contrary to the popular belief, they do not seem to sprout from unrelated prophets and messiahs, but come from a common source. Most of the attributes of the Russian tsars, kings and emperors have Arabic inscriptions on them. It's also all over their thrones and other belongings. This fact doesn't fit in this Caligar uh, history line, so it was completely ignored. And when photos were taken of these items, for example, for school books, they were always taken from an angle that uh, one cannot actually see the Arabic inscriptions. When the team of the new chronology started raising the question of these Arabic writings, Lai was quickly coined in a desperate attempt to find some sort of explanation. The lie was that since the Russians did not have knowledge how to make their own weapons, they had them ordered in other locations like Saudi Arabia, Turkey and many others. How could Saudi Arabia that did not have any mining at all developed or any uh, factories, big scale factories to manufacture such things, supply the full Russian army? Moreover, such explanations contradict 
other historic records because in various uh, countries in Asia there are gifts of similar weapons that the rulers have received from the Russians. At that time the industry in Russia was well developed, there was a lot of mining and a lot of factories manufacturing such sophisticated items. Moreover, on these weapons that are supposedly made in Islamic countries, there are plenty of depictions of human figures and this is just one of the many examples of so-called Islamic uh, helmets that are full of figures of uh, people and animals. That is not at all in Islamic style. Russia, the Christian country, was manufacturing items with Arabic inscriptions and not only weapons. Some luxury items that were definitely made in Russia also have Arabic inscriptions and side by side with these quotes from the Quran in some cases, there are purely Christian writings. An explanation of uh, Cyrillic writing right next to the Arabic is that the uh, weaponry was received as a gift from the Muslims, but then the Christians added their own next to it. However, the theme of the new chronology debunked this lie as well with the fact that in some cases the Russian Cyrillic writing was cast in such a way that it was obviously present at the time the weapon was originally made and could not have been added at a later stage. And I mean all this explanation that um, even the kings were uh, wearing uh, Arabic inscriptions, considering them as elements of flowers uh, without understanding them, is quite stupid. If Christians and Muslims were really bitter enemies, as the followers of Scaliger are trying to convince us, then I personally simply cannot believe it that uh, the king would wear inscriptions on the Quran on his own head, right on the forehead. And what were the Ottomans doing at the same time? I would like to read to you what a 19th century German mainstream German historians write. Although they are trying to find some sort of awkward explanation to these effects within the scope of this Caligar version, still the very facts that they present are very interesting. A number of Turkish rulers belonging to the dynasty of Dashimed of Cappadocia started painting coins depicting Jesus Christ. One of them had the special Christian Gigliati cross, the one you can see on the screen. It seems, continued the historians, that they were imitating, just imitating, the uh, coins of the European kings that you see now on the screen without understanding the meaning of these images. Historians continue even further. It seems other rulers of Asia Minor didn't want to be left behind. That is why they were also minting coins on which these fanatic Muslim rulers depicted themselves with European crowns on their heads, with European daggers and decorating themselves with Christian cross. All this must have been done by the unexperienced workers in the mints who did not understand what are they depicting because they didn't know Latin. So what's going on here? Some Christians seem to be a little bit too much Muslim and some Muslims seem to be a little bit too much Christian. I think the answer is that the history suggested by the new chronology project corresponds much better to the historic artifacts uh, and that means that there was one single culture in which Christianity and Islam were coexisting absolutely peacefully and they were in a peaceful symbiosis, so to say. Artificial separation and religious fanatism were instituted later on by the fraudulent history with the only purpose to divide and conquer. The plan was to gradually make the genuine spiritual culture of the survivors to rot from inside 
and then with the help of mass media to gradually introduce the parasitic culture and values and make them look natural for humans, which is not the case. The real humans do not belong to this movie of horrors that is now artificially imposed upon them. In reality, both Christian and Muslim symbols were official emblems of the empire of the survivors and were used all over its territory. Here I want to give another actually very hilarious example of how the believers of Scaliger try to explain uncomfortable artifacts. German royal regalia or insignia are the accessories and outfits which a German emperor or king would usually wear during coronation and other special occasions as signs of his royal power. And in a rare 19th century Germany history books, we find a very curious um, depictions of some of these outfits. The mantle of the German king has Arabic inscriptions on it. Any German writing is nowhere to be seen. But even more interesting, I find the official explanation of this amazing fact. This mantle must have been obtained by Frederick II when he took uh, possessions of the treasures of Henry VI. Well, the very word must have been already point to the fact that this is pure fantasy. Follow the story further. And since at this time the regalia of the German kings was damaged, um, they decided to use the mantle that was already in their possession in their treasury. Okay, possibly there was an old mantle and possibly it got damaged. That I can believe that it is possible to happen. However, after that, nobody in the entire kingdom or empire could get this brilliant innovative idea to make a new mantle with their own German symbols. Or maybe they got the idea, but there weren't enough funds available in the entire empire to manufacture a mantle. And that is why even the king had to wear second-hand items from faraway foreigners that he didn't even know. Charles the Great, great Christian king, Wikipedia assures us that he campaigned against the people to his east, Christianizing them upon penalty of death, at times leading to events such as the massacre of Berdin. His mantle, his ceremonial outfit, is now kept in the Archen Cathedral treasury. This fanatic Christian wore the signs of Islam all over his mantle and he had the main Islamic sign right on his chest. People were not those religious fanatics that we are led to believe they were. We have been misled to believe that they were fanatics with the purpose that we become fanatics and start killing innocent people for no reason whatsoever. Catholic Cathedral of St. Vitus in Prague. We are being assured that this is purely Catholic Cathedral, yet on a central place we see orthodox writings. These Italian and German swords are kept in a museum in Toronto. The Arabic inscriptions on them are uncomfortable for the official history. That is why they fabricated a clever description and put it even besides the swords in the museum. The explanation is that at some later stage the swords must have been kept in uh, some Arabic uh, storage place and that's why for the purpose of inventory these Arabic inscriptions were placed on them. Well, it is written in a museum on the wall and people actually believe these things. They think there is some research behind it. However, the proof of this story is uh, absolutely known. And most likely these old German and Italian words uh, bear Arabic inscriptions because at that time they were part of this big, vast culture of the survivors which is using Arabic language as one of the main all over its vast territory in which Germany and Italy were parts. Countless number of churches have the symbol of the crescent, the purely Muslim symbol of crescent, on their crosses. 
It seems that in the not so far away past, Christians and Muslims could exist peacefully, but since they adopted the new history, conflicts started appearing. A very interesting piece of literature has fortunately survived the medieval cleanup of uh, books containing real history, and that is Voyage Beyond Three Seas, written by Afanasy Nikitin. The book is written in Russian, well, most of it. The interesting thing is that right in the middle of the Russian text, the author elegantly inserts full passages in Arabic. Moreover, they continue to be written with Russian letters. One example. O oh my Lord, Jesus Christ, please be merciful upon the sinner Afanasia Nikitin. After a few more sentences in uh, this spirit, he says, O oh my Lord, Allah, my guiding star, Allah, Karim Allah, Regim Allah, Karim Allah, Regim Melio, Allah Him Dulimo. After that, he goes on in purely what we would call Christian spirit. And since he was writing this book to be read by the audience, not for himself, uh, obviously uh, the normal people at that time found it absolutely natural to switch between Russian and Arabic at any given time. Uh, later in the book, we can even read Issa Ruholo, which in um, translation would be something Issa, the spirit of Allah. At this point, we need actually to coin a new word. Is this a Christo-Islamic prayer or Islamo-Christian? And this is not the only book of this kind. Similar passages are found in a number of uh, very old Orthodox prayer books. Gunther Lulling was a German scholar who specialized in Islamic studies. He learned perfect Arabic and spent a long time in Syria for his studies. The conclusion of his research is that initially the Quran was in the form of these uh, Islamo-Christian songs. Paul of Aleppo was a Christian monk who was accompanying the Orthodox Christian patriarch Makarios III Zaim in his travels. The book is called The Travels of Makarios. So the question arises in what language was this book written? The supporters of uh, this Caligar theory, of course, will reply that this Orthodox Christian monk who was traveling with his Orthodox Christian uh, father and staying in an Orthodox Christian country, Russia, would uh, write his book in uh, uh, Russian or uh, maybe also in um, Old Greek language. Or maybe in the worst case scenario, it would be in Latin. However, the book is written in Arabic, and not only that, but inside this book, he writes actually in Russian language, but written with Arabic letters. To avoid this uncomfortable situation, modern historians declared that, that Paul must have been of Arabic origin, without any proof, of course, and even if we assume that he was born in uh, an Arabic environment, uh, still his book seriously question the approach of modern historians that put the label Islamic on anything that is in Arabic without requiring any additional proof. And now this is an original 17th century mantle of an Orthodox Russian priest kept in the Uglich National State Museum. The text is written in Russian and with Slavic letters. It is clearly understandable. There is mention of the Holy Cross and the Holy Resurrection. However, the very top row, in absolutely clear, clear and well-preserved Slavic letters, it is written Allah, Allah. I hope it is becoming uh, clear all those lies that uh, the Arabic inscriptions on the helmets of the kings were just flowery elements and the kings uh, had no idea what kind of decoration they were. No. Just look at this Christian cross that the uh, Islamic uh, 
makers of the helmets put there. It is time for the truth to come to light that there was only one Christiano-Islamic or Islamo-Christian original religion that was artificially divided later on with the purpose to divide and conquer and as the humans engage in senseless, useless, cruel wars under false religious slogans, the parasites just stand by and behold and enjoy our suicidal wars. Geberstein, a German ambassador, visited Russia a few centuries ago and this is an authentic illustration that he published for his journey at the time it happened. Pay attention at the outfit of the king who accepts the foreign messenger. We are conditioned nowadays to associate this type of uh, outfits with Islamic culture. However, this style of clothing was the style of the survivors, the descendants of the survivors. This is the symbol of the town Halle in Germany. It is a traditional symbol, of course, that is still in use. However, it looks uh, too Muslim and that is why a new explanation has been fabricated without any basis, of course, that this actually is a symbol of uh, salt. Yes, salt, pepper, oranges, bananas, everything else except the truth. Ebla is an archaeological site in Syria. The famous clay tablets were found there. And in the beginning, when an Italian translator started working on them, everything seemed as usual. However, when the translations uh, were published, it became clear that uh, they are changing the history as we know it. One of the things that was uh, mentioned by the translator, that actually the history of all religions together is different. The translator was personally threatened and forced to even renounce his existing translations and to stop translating further. In 2013, during the war in Syria, the place where the tablets and the research uh, papers on them are kept was bombed and destroyed. This is an actual footage uh, of the situation after this bombing. As pointed out earlier, the Vedic literature did not undergo parasitic edition and for that reason the history of religion over there is still present in its original form and as far as uh, Buddhism Buddha himself was born and raised within the environment of uh, Vedic culture so in one sense Buddhism is kind of a branch of what we call Hinduism. Not all Hindus today understand the true essence of the amazing ancient scriptures that they have inherited. The reason for this is the heavy pollution on their consciousness on the side of the modern culture. For example, this is a set of desktop items. Most of us, when we look at them, we either understand very quickly what they mean or we can find out quickly and easily learn what they mean. But to a member of uncontacted tribe from the Amazon jungle, these pictures will mean absolutely nothing. Why? Because he is outside of the culture which uses these icons. Same way most modern Hindus will keep at home books containing valuable knowledge but will understand very little of it because they have lost touch with the culture that used the ideas on the basis of which this knowledge is presented. Those who are genuine seekers I want to recommend this website you see the URL on the screen as a real genuine place to find out more about the real ideas of Sanatana Dharma 
Buddhism and yoga. Thank you to all of you who have been kind to send me emails. I am reading all of them and I will reply in a video form after my work on this documentary is over.